Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the consumptive uses of the water. So let's start. Now what is this consumptive use which is also known as the evapotranspiration. Now when we use the term evapotranspiration, it clears a lot of things. So this consumptive use for a particular crop that is defined as the total amount of water which is used by the plant in transpiration process that is building up of the plant tissues and the evaporation from the adjacent soils or from the plant leaves that is specified within the given duration. For example, if you look at this is the ground level and this is a certain crop which is growing inside the field which is having certain root zone beneath it. So when we talk about the amount of water which is used by the plant, so the roots of the plant they will extract certain amount of the water towards them. Now this water that is used by the plant to grow up the tissues and to grow faster. So this water will be supplied to the each and every part of the plant and some part of the remaining water that will be evaporated directly from the soil because of the evaporation process and this building up of the plant that is known as the transpiration process while this remaining process is the evaporation process that may occur directly from the soil or from the plant leaves that both may be the cases. Now the value of this consumptive use that we are calling as evapotranspiration that may be different for different crops. Depending upon the water requirement of the crop these values will be different and also they may be different for the single crop given that at what time we are talking about and at what place we are considering the plant. For example, if we are talking about the summer season, then there will be more chances of the evaporation in comparison to the winter season. That's why if you are talking about the single crop, then its usage of the water that may vary depending upon the time and the place. Now this transpiration process that is defined as the process in which the water leaves a living plant during the photosynthesis through its leaves to the atmosphere. That means the whatever amount of water that is used by the plant tissues, the remaining one that will be the remaining one will be going back to the atmosphere. This process is known as the transpiration. Now obviously this growing up of the plant that occurs during the photosynthesis process and this photosynthesis process that occurs during the daylight. That means the 95% extent of the transpiration process that is observed during the photosynthesis process. While if we compare that to the evaporation process that is continuous throughout the day and night. However, the magnitude of the evaporation during the day and night that may differ but the process will continue throughout the day. Now these are considered as the losses. So these transpiration losses they depend not only on the sunlight but also on the available moisture. That means if let's say the sunlight is very high. So let's say if the sunlight is very high that means the temperature will be very high but the moisture which should be present within the plant that is not available up to the required quantity then there will be lesser chances of the transpiration process. That means the value of the transpiration that varies and to standardize this we use a certain ratio which is known as the transpiration ratio. Then how is it defined? It is defined as the ratio of the mass of water, ratio of the mass of water which is transpired by the plant to the dry matter. That means the 
mass of the leaves or the other fruits or the flowers that is being produced by the plant after its full growth so if we look at the transpiration ratio this value comes out to be equal to the mass of water which is transpired to the mass of the dry matter now the two commonly used crops the rice which is used in the kharif season it is having a transpiration ratio of 600 to 800 that means throughout its growth period the rice transpires the amount of water if we take this average value to be 700 so the rice transpires on an average the 700 times the mass of the dry matter which it is producing similarly for the wheat crop which is a rabi crop if we take the average value which is 450 so on an average this wheat transpire 450 times the mass of the dry matter as the water now this transpiration amount that is measured by an instrument which is named as the phytometer now this phyto that is referring to the plant now this process of measurement of the transpiration with the help of the instrument phytometer is a widely used method which consists of a closed and watertight tank which contains the sufficient soil to nourish the plant for example you can see here as you can see this is representing a closed tank which is containing the plant and the sufficient soil to nourish the plant now what we do we provide the water artificially from the external sources so that the plant can grow in this now how this transpiration is measured so for that we have certain formulation which is is equal to the m1 value which is the initial weight of the instrument including the weight of the plant and the soil in that we add the value of the water that we have added the water that is added that is placed in the equation now this is the total weight initially now when the water will be consumed by the plant for its growth that means there will be certain reduction in the mass that value after the growth of the plant that is measured as m2 and the difference between these two value that is considered to be the mass of the water which is used by the plant as under the transpiration process now however these values which are used or which are found experimentally they are somewhat different from the actual values because of the screened shelters which are provided at the top therefore these results they may vary up to 10 percent that means if the original value is 100 then this may vary from 90 to 110 so for those reasons these values are approximated and they are not the actual values so this is a field method that how do we measure the consumptive use of a plant now if we look at the empirical methods so for the estimation of the consumptive use various methods have been developed to estimate this value but the most simple and commonly used methods they are these three that is the blaney cradle equation given by these two scientists than the Hargreaves class A pan evaporation method that is given by Hargreaves and the equation which is used for the water budgeting given by the Penman known as the Penman's equation so one by one we will discuss all of them so the first equation is the Blaney Criddle equation now it states that the monthly conservative use it gives us the value of the monthly consumptive use that is how much water is consumed by the plant monthly that is is equal to the cu that is consumptive use value that is is equal to k into p 
इंटू वन पॉइंट एट टाइम्स टी प्लस थर्टी टू डिवाइडेड बाई फोर्टी दैट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ द कंजर्वेटिव यूज नाउ इन दिस दिस सी यू वैल्यू इज द मंथली कंजम्पन ऑफ द वॉटर इन सेंटीमीटर्स दिस के दैट इज अ क्रॉप फैक्टर विच इज फाउंड एक्सपेरिमेंटली एंड इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द कंडीशन ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर एरिया सो दिस वैल्यू विल बी वेरिंग दिस स्मॉल टी दैट इज द मेन मंथली टेम्परेचर इन डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड दिस स्मॉल पी दैट इज द मंथली परसेंट ऑफ द एनुअल डे लाइट आवर्स that occur during the period that during a particular month what percent of the that duration will be occurring under the daylight if we represent this entire term that is p into 1.8 p plus 32 divided by 40 as small f then this will be cu is equals to k into f now the reason to use this small f representation that is because of the variation of the crop throughout the year so for a particular crop this k that is the crop factor that will be varying and this f value will be for that particular crop only and based upon this we will get the consumptive use in a particular season so if you to calculate the consumptive use throughout the year that is calculated as k summation f value that is if we add up the consumptive uses of all the crops throughout the year then that would give us the exact value now the problem in this method is that this k that is the crop factor this depends on the area and these values are and these values are not available for the indian context and that's why this method is not used in india moving on to the next method that is known as the hargreaves class a pan evaporation method now what we do in this case this evapotranspiration that is the consumptive use that is related to the pan evaporation by a constant which is represented by capital k which is known as the consumptive use coefficient and that is given as the capital k which is the consumptive use coefficient as the ratio of the evapotranspiration which is occurring for a particular crop to the pan evaporation so what we do we take the certain amount of water in a pan which is open to the atmosphere and because of the temperature which is received by the sunlight the certain amount of water that will be evaporating now the amount of water which is getting evaporated that is known as the pan evaporation that is the evaporation taking place from the pan and based upon this consumptive use coefficient this actual evapotranspiration this will be calculated as k into the pan evaporation now the consumptive use coefficient that is different for the different crops and that may be different for a single crop depending upon the season a value of this coefficient that is available for indian context and that's why this method is preferred in india now according to this method this entire region is divided into eight groups and for each group we are having a different value for the consumptive use coefficient and accordingly this k value is fixed now in this case the pan evaporation is measured by a class a pan which is having the standard dimension now as you can see this image this is representing the dimension of the pan so that is having a diameter of 1.2 meter or roughly around 120 cm the depth of the pan that is 25 cm and it is resting over a platform which is raised by 15 cm so 
this platform is raised above the ground by a height of 15 centimeter. Now the depth of water which is provided in this pan that is placed in such a way that it is at a depth of 5 to 8 centimeter that is it is at the 5 to 8 centimeter from the top that means the total height was around 25 centimeters so if we are leaving the 5 centimeter space on the top of it that means the depth of the water which will be available that is somewhere around 20 centimeters now these values are based upon the precise experiment which is performed by the Hargreaves and this is the common assembly of the class A pan evaporation. Now these instruments which are placed they are used for the they are used to ascertain the direction of the wind which are known as the wind vanes. The next of the method is known as the Penman's equation. Now the earlier two methods that we have discussed they had been in use for the last many years for the computation of the consumptive use values. However, this Penman's equation that has been recently introduced and when we are talking about the recently introduced that means we are talking about the 30-40 years back. Now this evapotranspiration is calculated with the help of an equation which is A into Hn plus Ea into gamma divided by A plus gamma where this Et is the daily potential evapotranspiration this capital A that is the slope of saturation vapor pressure versus temperature curve at the mean air temperature. That means if this is the saturation vapor pressure that is represented by Vs, this is the temperature and this is the curve which is provided between them. So the slope of this at the mean air temperature, this value is represented as capital A. This Hn that is the net incoming solar radiation that is net heat which is provided. This Ea is the parameter which is including the wind velocity and the saturation deficit while this gamma that is a psychometric constant having a constant value of 0.49 millimeter of mercury per degree Celsius. So if we place the all the values in this equation then we would be able to calculate the potential evapotranspiration values. That's why this is purely a formulation based method which is used for the evapotranspiration. All these values are also available in case of India and that's why this equation is also used in Indian context. So that completes all the methods which are used to estimate the evapotranspiration values. In the next video, we will solve the numericals based upon this consumptive use of the water. Thank you.